There is something very broken in Canada today. I could talk about inflation being at 40-year highs. I could talk about uh, interest rate hikes in the last 12 months that are doubling the average mortgage payments and uh, making residential rental rates out of reach for many workers in Canadian cities that need workers. I could talk about the housing affordability crisis. I could talk about crime. And we have talked about these things. Uh, and we are now learning that recent polls say that two-thirds of Canadians feel that Canada is, in fact, broken. Now, one of the pillars of our society they feel is broken is our health care system. Canadians used to be proud of our universal, world-class, leading-edge health care system. Now people wait for hours for emergency care and months for specialist appointments. This does not line up with the view that we as Canadians have, our, have of ourselves as a prosperous nation. There's indeed something broken, and nowhere is this more evident than in our mental health care arena. We are in the midst of a serious opioid crisis right across this country, certainly in British Columbia, my home province. A decriminalization, safe supply, anti-stigma campaigns have had, at best, very little positive effect. And at worst, they have contributed to the skyrocketing of opioid deaths in the last eight years. Clearly, what this government has been doing has not been working. And, Madam Speaker, it is in this environment that we are now, as parliamentarians, talking about whether made medical assistance in dying should be made available to those whose only underlying health condition is a mental illness. Indeed, there is something broken. There was a time when those suffering a mental illness got the help they needed. I want to quote from an editorial that ran in last weekend's Vancouver Sun by editorial writer Douglas Todd. Now, he writes often, but not often about himself or his family. But here's a very personal story. When Mr. Todd was a young man, his father, Harold, a World War II vet, was diagnosed with schizophrenia. He spent many stable years in Metro Vancouver's Riverview Hospital, where he received three meals a day, where he, where he was kept safe, where nurses administered and monitored his medications, where he was stable. Riverview was not perfect, but it kept Harold off the streets. Now, Harold died 23 years ago, according to the story, uh, right around the time that the provincial government started taking the view that hospitals and boarding houses for the mentally ill were inhumane, paternalistic, and that patients with mental illness should be, not be out of sight, out of mind, but should be allowed to live in community. So these facilities have been largely wound down and replaced with, well, nothing. Disaster. Now, the younger Todd notes that last year alone, 2,272 British Columbia residents died of toxic street drugs. And he says this, Quote, if my dad had not had stable housing, he would have been vulnerable to such a fate. Close quote. And that is where mental health is at in Canada in 2023. That brings me to, now to the question of uh, recovery and incurability of mental health. A member of my community shared with me this chilling story of how their daughter struggled with mental health years ago. And through a turn of events, happened upon a hospital during a severe bout with suicidality. My constituent is confident that if her daughter had been offered maid in the hospital that day, she would have agreed to it. Instead, she found hope for a better tomorrow and access to real support. She is now recovered and is living a full life as a mother, as a wife, a mother, and a member of our community. This question of possible recovery is one that experts disagree on. What constitutes irremediability for mental illness? When is a mental illness incurable, and how do we discern that? Our special uh, joint parliamentary committee on MAID looked into these very troubling questions. One witness uh, shared that he likely would have chosen MAID in his darkest days, but now has a rich life with successful medication and therapy. Uh, Dr. Rackus gave uh, this opinion that people struggling with mental illness 
um, that Offrey made to them is a clear, quote, clear signal of, of disengagement from mental illness. Dr. Serene from the Association of Chairs of Psychiatry said in December 2022, quote, we are in the middle of an op uh, opioid epidemic and we're in the middle of a mental health pandemic. Post COVID, wait times for access to treatment are the highest ever, close quote. Now, Madam Speaker, we can't pretend that patients have a free choice between made and treatment when, the, when treatment is simply not accessible. When no consensus has been reached about such pivotal questions as, can this person be cured, there's a huge risk in assuming that they cannot. The reality is providing made to a person suffering from mental illness is an irreversible reaction to a condition that we don't know whether it is incurable. Dr. Maher summed this up perfectly in his testimony to, to, his committee, to the committee when he said, quote, the rallying cry is autonomy at all costs but the inescapable cost is people dying who could get better. What number of mistaken guesses is acceptable to you? He challenged the committee. Dr. Mishara added that uh, he has personally known countless people who have, quote, convincingly explained that they want to die to end their suffering and are now thankful to be alive. If you proceed to allow MAID for persons with mental illness, how many people who will later have been happy to be alive, are you willing to let die? Now, Madam Speaker, there are, of, co of course, experts on the other side of the debate who uh, assure us that we can discern between people who apply for MAID and people who suffer from suicidal ideation. Experts who believe that when a person is depressed and can see no brighter future, that we should not try to change their mind by offering care, medication, and therapy. But I am confident that this uh, lack of consensus alone should be enough to say definitively no. Expanding MAID to those whose only underlying condition is mental, uh, mental health is not a responsible policy, public policy choice. Instead, let's fix our health care system. Let's see this government deliver on its forgotten promise to fund Canada mental health. Let's open or reopen our assisted living homes for people suffering a mental illness. Let's take care of our mental, mentally ill people. Let's give hope for a better tomorrow and the support needed to live through today.